everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're going to take this flower image, and the thing about this image that I don't like, and I love the image, by the way, but the thing I don't like is this splotchy-looking background. I shot this with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens with a, uh, with a Canon 500D, I believe it is, uh, close-up filter, uh, you know, attached to the lens, which gave me a nice macro image here with a nice soft bokeh. I shot it at a 3.2, giving me a very shallow depth of field. But there were some sticks back here, behind here, and they blur away nicely, but they're dark and they look like dirt on the image, and I don't like that. So I want to clean that up. It's kind of like looking out of a window that has some dirt on it, and it's just not that attractive, right? It's not that conducive to look out that window when you see those little dirt smudges on it, right? So you want to clean that window. Well, I want to clean this background so this image looks nice and beautiful and fresh. So let's get started, guys. First thing we want to do is go into Photoshop. We're going to right click the image and this dialog box opens up here. Come down to where it says edit in and click on edit in Adobe Photoshop CC 2018. That will launch Photoshop. Once we're inside Photoshop, what we're going to do is we have this background layer here and it's locked and that's fine. What we want to do is add a blank layer above it. So come down here in the bottom right hand corner of the Photoshop interface and click this icon right next to the trash can. Click that and that puts a blank layer above the background layer. All right. The next thing we need to do is make a selection. Now we could use the quick selection tool to make a selection. We could try to use the lasso tool and draw around it. These would be all ways that we could do it, but not very effective ways. I think the most effective way on this particular image, because it just has like a greenish color background and it's not real busy back there, right? So the best selection tool I think here would be the color range selection tool. And we're going to find that up in the menu section up here under select and come down and you'll see there it is color range. Give that a click. Now, when you click that, this color range dialog box will come up and you'll notice you have three eyedropper tools here. This is the default one. This is a uh, one has a little plus and one has a minus. So this will add selections. This will subtract from selections. All right. And there's a little invert checkbox there. You can invert your, your selections as well. Okay. We're not going to be using that this time. You also have uh, a, a drop down box here. Right now we're just using sample colors. Uh, there's also a section here that says localized color clusters. We're not using that right now. I'll explain that another time. Don't want to get into that right now. And then we have this fuzzy this slider. We'll be using this to make fine tuning of our adjustment here, okay? But first off, we're defaulted at this eyedropper tool right here, okay? So what we're gonna do is just come out and click on a color that we want to add to our selection. So let's just click right here. And you see it added a bunch of, of that green there, but it missed a bunch too, right down in here. And I wanna select all this stuff here. And there's some stuff, sections up here it missed as well. So what we need to do, guys, is well, one thing we could do, we can adjust this fuzziness slider and pull some more uh, of that selection in. But right now, I don't want to do that. I want to leave this fuzziness slider down to about a quarter of the way for now. But what I want to do is hold the shift key down. And this is the same in a Mac or a PC. Hold the shift key down and continue to hold it down and start clicking around the background. And you'll notice every time you click, you'll pick up more of the background. You can also click and click and then just drag that eyedropper tool and it'll pick up a whole bunch. See, I'm just dragging it all around in here, you know, just dragging it down here, up in here, up in here. And then we could take this fuzziness slider and then we can adjust it. Adding more selection, that's too much or less. We can just tweak that a little bit. So maybe like, maybe right around there. Now let's click, see where it says selection preview? Right now it says none. Let's click that and click on grayscale. And we can actually see the selection we made right there. You can see it, it, it added some section here that I don't really want, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. And if it is, I'll show you how we can fix that. Same with this leaf here. Okay, so for now, I think our selection is pretty good. So let's go forward here. Let's just click OK. And now we've made a selection. You can see the marching ants showing us that we have a selection made, guys, okay? Next thing we wanna do is add a layer mask with that selection built into it. And this is really cool. If you come down to the layer mask icon, and if you have a selection loaded, which we do, and click on the layer mask, watch what happens. We've made that, uh, we've added the, um, the mask with the selection built right into it. Now, if I hold the, um, 
Option key down and click on the layer mask. You can see there's our layer mask. The white areas are our selection and the black areas are not selected. So pretty cool. Now, if we option click the layer mask, we'll go back to our image. Now we wanna make sure we've selected this blank pixel layer right here. So give that a click. And now what we need to do guys is find a color that we can use to paint over these dark areas here. So I'm gonna pick a color right around this section right here. Make sure you have your brush tool selected. Just type or press your B key on your PC or Mac. All right, and then hold your Option or Alt key down and a little eyedropper tool comes up and then just give that a click. And when I do, you see that? It selects a color. If I hover over red and click, it's selected red. And notice my swatch changed to red. But I want this color right here, so I'm just gonna click it. Now, very important, let's come up here to the, um, to the menu up here. I'm in the normal mode here. My opacity is set to 20%. I could have it set to 10%, 20% higher, but I find for what I'm doing here, 20% is good because I want to build this uh, paint job up slowly. Okay, so I'm using 20% and the flow is at 100%, which is fine. All right, so now I've got my paint selected. All right, so I'm gonna grab my, I'm using a ta Wacom tablet here. So I'm just gonna start painting over these dark areas. And I can paint right over my flowers, guys. It doesn't matter. I'm going to try to avoid these leaves up here. Because remember, some of that selection didn't come out real good. Every time I lift my brush or my pen or my mouse, <laughs> unclick it or whatever, I've really, you know, you know I'm now adding another 20% of, of paint. Okay. And I'm going to keep painting until I get rid of all these blotchy areas. I'm going to lift again and paint again. And I'm just painting away. You can whistle, sing, whatever you want, guys. But just keep painting in here. And there we go. I think that looks pretty good. Now, let's click this eyeball on and off. There's the before and after. Now, if we option click uh, the eyeball, we'll see what we painted. And you see I haven't painted up here, but I just painted. And it, it, there's not a whole lot of paint down on there, guys. So let's option click again. Um... Let's zoom into this image, and I'll, and I'll explain that in a second. So on a uh, Mac, you would uh, type Command and the plus key. In a, on a PC, it'd be a Control and the plus key. And when you do that, you'll zoom in. I want to zoom in pretty good here. All right, so right, right around here. Because what I'm, what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm looking at the grain or the digital noise on the areas that I didn't paint, which would be like these areas right in here. And as you can see... There's not much noise, if any, here. Um, and the reason being is I used uh, Lightroom to get rid of a little bit of noise that was on there. I was shooting this at ISO 640, so there wasn't a whole lot of noise, but I got rid of the little bit of noise that was there. It looks just a little funny around the edge here where the mask was. So here's a little trick here, guys. What we can do is I'll get back to looking at the green structure here in a second. But before I get there, let me explain something here about if I wanted to make this look a little, this trans just transition to be a little smoother here. If we go to it, click on our layer mask here and then go to properties of your layer mask. Can you see this feather butt, feather slider right here? Watch here as I pull this feather slider to the right. See how that gets a little softer there? The edge gets a little softer. It just makes it look a little more believable you know, it's just basically what it's doing is it's smoothing out my um, my um, mask here. So let, let me option click the mask and I think you'll you'll see here. Watch when I pull that feather up. See that mask getting softer? That's all I'm doing, guys, is I'm just softening the edges of my mask. So that's a pretty nice little tip. So remember that one, okay? Option click the mask again and the mask will come off. All right. And we'll see the image again. So back to the grain. So I'm looking at the grain here, guys, and I'm not seeing very much here. But we've got to, this green paint here is raw paint. So we need to add a little bit of noise to match the grain structure of the non-painted areas. Okay, so let's go up here to filter. Let's find, um, oh, I'm on my mask. I need to be on my actual uh, pixel layer here, right, where I painted Let's go up to filter again, and let's go to noise, and click add noise. And make sure you have monochromatic checked off, and make sure you have Gaussian selected. Now you can take this slider here and drag it to the right, and notice when I do, 
It's only adding noise to the painted areas on this layer. You won't see it on the masked off areas, okay? Pretty cool. It's only going to add paint, or it's only going to add noise to those areas, okay? So now let's drag this back. I don't like to use the slider to make my adjustment. I like, because it gets a little, it's not real um, smooth. So what I like to do is if you hover over a mount here, see that little uh, finger, little hand with the finger with the right and left arrow? Click that and drag it. You can drag it a lot slower. And I'm just going to drag till I start to see some, gr some grain or noise there. So I'm just going to back it off to where I think it's matching the non-selected area, which I think is right around... Right around here, I think, looks pretty good, guys, right there. And then I'm just going to click OK. And that's it. Pretty easy. Now, here's a little shortcut to go back to the, to the full screen. If you double-click the hand tool, you'll go back. So now let's look at the before and after. Let's click this eyeball right here. So there's our before and our after. So looking pretty nice, guys. The only thing I think I want to do is add, make these leaves a little greener. And I might want to do something with these reds here. So to do that, I'm going to use the camera raw filter. But first thing I need to do is bring these two layers together into one single layer above here. And to do that, there's a shortcut. Shift, Option, Command, E on a Mac or Shift, Option, Control, E on a PC. And that just brings these two layers together into one layer here, okay? And then we want to come up into, go up to Filter, Find Camera Raw Filter, give that a click. And inside a camera raw filter, the only adjustment I want to use is the HSL adjustment, which is found right in here. And this works just like in Lightroom, if you're familiar with Lightroom. All right, so I want to be on saturation. I'm going to go to greens, and I'm going to drag the green slider to the right. And look, I'm just adding a little bit more green to the green colors. And then I'm going to come over to the hue and just tweak those greens to make sure I'm getting them the right. Say, so I don't like that color. Just finding a color that I like. I can make them a little more yellow, and that look nice. But I'm going to go... Just slightly greener, just a little more green. Right there, I think that looks pretty nice. Now let's play with the reds. Let's go back to saturation. Now let's go to reds. I'm going to move the red to the right and add more red into the reds. Mm, it's okay. I'm going to move it to the left. When I move it to the left, notice I can see some of these veins showing through here, and it gets a little pinker, and I think that's kind of pretty. So I'm just going to move it a little more towards the red side, but I just want to see those veins right about there. I think that looks really pretty. So I'm just going to click OK and accept that. That'll bring us back into Photoshop. Now let's click the before and after. Now this is just the HSL layer. So there it is, before and after. I think a nice addition. Let's option click the background layer. So here's our original guys, and here's our after. So before and after. Pretty cool, right? So give that one a try, guys. If you need to clean up a background, think paint. Don't think Clone. Think paint. All right. All right, guys. Thanks for, uh, thanks for uh, coming along with me today on this episode. Um, if you liked it, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And also, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do so and click that bell notification icon so you can be informed of all the new training videos that I'm putting out on a very regular basis. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.